Um, kia ora, my name is uh, Adam Hyde. I'm a, um, a New Zealander living um, also sometimes, I meant to say hello, it's a small world, New Zealand. Um, uh, living in Berlin and around the place. Um, I, I have a number of different hats that I wear. I um, started an organisation called Floss Manuals, which is, uh, writes free documentation about free software. It's a completely voluntary effort. Um, also um, founded a platform called Booktype. It's been around for six years or so. It's a, um, a collaborative book production platform and a um, methodology um, uh, called Book Sprints, which I started five years or so ago, which is um, what I want to focus on now because it's most closely aligned to um, notation annotation. So um, Book Sprints, uh, in brief, is a, a rapid production methodology. It, um, it brings together um, a group of people, six to 12 people, to work collaboratively, um, often in the same space. Um, it's, it's very much about concurrent production. Um, it's, it's about the real space interactions, although it can also happen in part remotely or entirely remotely. Um, it's an intensive collaborative um, process and it's also um, a very good participative uh, learning environment. So um, if you have a group of experts in a room, they all learn from each other. And if you have a mixture of experts and non-experts, uh, it becomes a really uh, fueled participative learning environment. And um, I'll talk about this a little bit because this is um, a little bit about what I was asked to um, discuss. So just this is what a book sprint basically looks like, a whole lot of people sitting around a table somewhere nice um, uh, uh, working together. Um, this is what it also looks like. Um, food is probably the, the most important ingredient uh, from a book sprint. Um, I play the role of facilitator, by the way, in these things. It's a heavily uh, facilitated process. Um, so some of the early examples, we started off with very, um, a very vague methodology um, put to work on very concrete material and now we sort of have a very concrete methodology that we're putting to work on more, increasingly more vague material. But we started off, um, for example, with um, uh, free software, very concrete things. Uh, this is a book sprint we did in two days. So we produced a 350 page book about um, uh, introduction to the command line. Um, and it was uh, a two-day book sprint, um, and yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic book. So just to give you a sense that the, the development process is very fast, which is one of the things I want to talk about with regard to um, annotation. Oil contracts, um, how to, um, all this content is free. Um, it's a very immersive, collaborative environment. It needs to be freely licensed, and that not only that, that the people have to have a feeling of uh, collaboration, um, you know, no single authorship, but everybody is in this together. Um, Oil contracts is one kind of risky experiment with five um, oil company contract lawyers and some watchdog groups and um, uh, government um, uh, personnel. The question was, could they collaborate? And they collaborated really uh, fantastically well as it happened. Um, this is another book sprint we did um, about notation systems. Um, we've also applied it to the humanities uh, with a group of four um, professors um, looking at uh, digital aesthetic practice um, uh, through the lens of some avant-garde practice um, that was extremely interesting. Um, and just recently, just last week in fact, with the University of Amsterdam, there's a first book sprint involving, or well, second book sprint actually, involving students from um, a media studies course, this time from the University of Amsterdam, uh, to produce um, works that, um, in a book sprint that then get assessed. And we're working towards um, what I would, re my, one of my personal aims is to see uh, book sprints used uh, by students to produce um, uh, textbooks, open textbooks. So students create the textbooks and it's uh, consumed and improved by, text, uh, by students. So um, I just, you know, book sprints use a lot of annotation and I, I just want to put in the, the notation into the annotation because I, I, I don't see the difference actually and I think it's quite an interesting um, discussion about what notation is as a personal or a shared system and how they develop because this is a very important part of uh, intensive collaborative practice that you develop a language together, um, which is commonly referred to you know, as a not notation system. Um, and uh, that notation system might just exist for a very short period of time uh, for the duration of the sprint, or it might go beyond that. Um, and you know, annotation is this understanding, I guess, of another layer on top of these things. And, and the two kind of seem to go in between each other. And, and also, I think this is very much true of how um, publishing and publications are changing. We've always had this idea of a printed page and the annotation is a layer that sits on, a, on top of it, but as we go more and more into the digital sphere, there's you know, no need to make this differ differentiation. So the, 
the interplay between um, the, the layers is, is a little bit more confusing and, and the question of what is annotation and notation I think is also comes under this kind of semantic um, re under reorientation I think. Anyway, so this is what um, some of the sort of systems that we use, um, commonly known as post-it notes. Um, uh, and we use analog scribal devices uh, for, for the notation. Um, and uh, and I, want, I also want one of the important things to point out in this is that um, I, I very much love the idea of the interplay between the analog and the digital of having uh, you know analog um, uh, notation systems alongside digital notation systems. Anyway, and them informing each other. So um, you know we, we generally we make lots of notes and you know these, these systems become very complicated. Um, you know, this is kind of the mapping of some concepts in the humanities sprint we did about um, uh, Andre Malraux and imaginary museums. Um, this is um, uh, Dr. David Berry uh, explaining some idea of how he wants to remap this. Um, this is the uh, notation book sprint talking about concepts and um, and. You know, we also use um, di uh, also drawings. Um, this is a notation systems um, um, uh, book sprint where we had um, uh, dragons and turtles as the title. You know, dragons being there are there be dragons. You know, when you start talking about notation systems, you can very easily fall into talking about language itself, which is a very it's a dragon. Um, we know it's there, and we don't want to talk about it because it just blows all, the, all of our ideas out of the water. And, uh, and turtles, you know, the Terry Pratchett idea of you know, the, the universe sitting on a turtle, and what's under that is another turtle, and you know, this unpeeling of meanings, uh, built notation systems built on notation systems, which I guess is what annotation is about. Yeah, we, get, we tend to annotate everything as we go, including people and giant cats. Um, <laughs> and people have their own personal annotation systems too, so you know, they come up with these these pages to describe their own ideas to themselves and, and it's augmented by discussions and then it makes it into the notation, makes it onto the wall, makes it into the book, this kind of thing. And then um, I just started to do some experimentations with creating visualizations of the timeline and notating this as well to understand the dynamics of book sprints. And then we print stuff out and we sit on the ground and we notate it again and we look at it, chop it up, get the scissors out and, um, and restructure it analog and then digitally blah blah blah. So the couple of things that book sprints that are important from these kind of notations and annotation systems is that um, the spatial relationships are very important um, and also in that I mean also that they are ambient, that they actually occupy space around us. Um, and uh, they require a lot of graphical um, elements um, and they re it requires a, sh a development of a language, either personal one or a shared one that you, you know, this is, this is, this is critical to um, sort of uh, develop a, um, a system that we all kind of understand and it's very difficult for people to enter into a book sprint once it started because they don't have the shared understanding, the shared language and, and shorthand and notation and annotation. One other thing I just very, as I finish up, very quickly want to talk about is that um, book sprints is a rapid production environment, it's a concurrent production environment and that's increasingly becoming the web. Um, and the web is, um, if you've just seen for example um, Firepad just released, you know, this is meant to be a text production system and, and there's a lot of things like this, you know, etherpad, blah, 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 but you know, as they get better and better and as we become more fluent in them, um, text production starts to look much more like chat rooms. And there's a, there's a big question about, you know, what does that mean for notation systems? And for example, in, the, um, in, in book sprints, rapid production of text, you know, the question of annotating stuff is actually disruptive. It actually slows the process down if you're talking about digital annotations. You know, I, I want to mark this thing here and then you have to go and look at it and interpret it and come back to me. This slows the process down. You actually want to, people to make direct edits as fast as possible. Um, so in this kind of rapid concurrent environment, the needs for annotation change. Um, and I think they, they require much more um, shorthand visual cues. And I haven't done a lot of thinking about this, I'm largely a practitioner, um, but I think some of these things are, are just starting to get interested in to see how they could help this process. A couple of things, thanks to Nick for pointing out the New York Times um, uh, emphasis thing, you should check this out, it's just for providing emphasis, um, which gives a, a micro link to content within news articles. And going back to you know the beginning, um, to, uh, Doug Engelbert's um, purple numbers, you know, and the idea of looking at um, enumerated um, paragraphs and saying as, as a way to negotiate space to say paragraph 40, what do you think about that? You know, in this kind of rapid production environment, that's that's a critical thing to be able to uh, to utilise. Thank you.